All right, welcome back. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take all of this and turn it into all of this. Let's get started. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You know who I am. I'm Dave Guerra, U.S. Army veteran, 11 Bravo, This Vet Cooks. And what are we doing today? Yep, we're going to go ahead and create turkey pot pie perennial classic. So let's uh, let's get dive. Let's dive in. But I took a trip to HEB. I talk about it. And here's where we picked up our cream of mushroom. That's one of the things we need. We need some turkey breast. So luckily they had a lot in stock. So I picked up a butter ball. Uh, there it is. Drop that in the cart. And then we headed over to the refrigerated section and we looked for and found some mixed vegetables. Now I didn't pick the big bag. I took the smaller bag. I know it's not price efficient, but hey, $1.48. Uh, okay. Either way, mixed vegetables. It worked out. All right. So there we go. We need one bag. The other bag was for something else. You may have already seen. Alrighty. Now we head on over to the refrigerator section or the dairy section and they have biscuits there. So hey, why not? Right. So we'll throw in some jumbo biscuits. Hey, look, it's eggnog season. There you go. Alrighty. What else do we get? Oh, yeah. We get, went and picked up a Pillsbury pie crust. Look at the price difference. Yeah. So this is a deep dish. You definitely want a deep dish pie crust. It's going to work here for this. And here's all the ingredients again. So we also had some salt, pepper, onion powder, uh, garlic powder, the cream of chicken, the biscuits, the uh, pie crust, the chicken breast, and the veggies. All right. So first thing we got to do is let that turkey breast defrost. You saw it was rock hard. Uh, let it defrost. Now, another thing that, that you need to know, and this was technically my first time cooking the butterball turkey breast. It didn't come in. It didn't. When we opened it, took it out of the package, it looked nothing like what the outside molding, the way it was molded, was giving us the impression it was going to look like. So um, here we go. We'll cut this out. To take this net off. I have no idea what the net's for other than a handle. They could have just used a handle. All right. So let's get in here. Let's uh, lay this out. Now, we're going to go ahead and have to bake the, the turkey first. So we've got this deep dish pan here and some aluminum foil. So we'll do that. And then we'll go from there. We'll get this foil out of here. It's really thick foil. Be careful. Uh, it will, if you, it, it'll, it, it's enough to generate a paper cut. It, it's happened. So be careful. Okay. So we're going to put the first sheet down. And uh, at first glance, I thought I had a lot. Oh, look at the meat. See, it's all kind of just packed in there. And, but it's all breast meat. It's all very good. It's all breast meat. So there's the fat, all of that. We're not trimming anything away, but we are going to add some of that slap your mama seasoning, Cajun seasoning. Folks, if you've never cooked with slap, slap your mama, you're missing something here. So we'll go ahead and sprinkle liberally, sprinkle that on the on the breast. Flip it over a little bit. Come on. It's, it's, it's like three pounds. I think it was like three pounds of, of turkey breast. And we'll do that again. Yeah, I know. Contaminated the field. It is poultry. But uh, don't worry. I did wipe everything down and I did wash my hands afterwards. So there we go. There's that generous helping of slap your mama. Get it in the crevices everywhere. It's going to be good. We're going to bake it. And uh, oh, add a little more here. I forgot a spot there. Now, uh, make sure you get it's enough foil paper to cover everything and to seal it up nice and neat. Uh, so and, and at this point, at, it's at this point, I realized I didn't have enough foil. So let me pack it up as much as I can, fold in as much as I can. And then really now at this point, I'm trying to figure out, hey, what am I going to do? All righty. So we'll leave that alone. We're going to cap. And now nope, we're going to need more foil. So I got another sheet of foil. We'll get that here in just a second. Come on, Dave. Let's go. Yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah, I kept trying to the bitter end, but I had to give up. All right. So there's that. All right. There we go. There's the uh, there's the foil, the uh, next sheet of foil. And it's really long. And that's the one we're going to wrap this up with here in just a second. So we'll take this out, wrap it and roll it. We're going to be rolling it into it, into the foil or the foil around it, wrapping it around there, and then we'll seal it up nice and neat. Now it's going to hold in all the juices. It's going to be fantastic. There we go. Seal it up there. No, we're not doing a tent. We want to keep the juices in there. We don't want them to escape. We want them to go ahead and stay in there. So I guess in this case, double wrapping it in foil really worked out. But again, that's up to you. That's up to you. All right, there it is. All right, now we're going to go ahead and throw it in the oven, 325. And I do believe we were there for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, give or take. Um, so there we go. All right. So we'll throw that in the oven. All right. Now, 
many, many, many minutes later, we take it out, like I said, about an hour and a half, and we're going to go ahead and unwrap this thing. And one of the first things I noticed, uh, the, the aroma, it was awesome. And then the juices were all, they were spilling out. You see them there on the outer wrapping, but inside, oh, it was just a pool of juices. And uh, there it is. Now, um, this was a big three pounder. You don't need the three pounds to do the Popeye. And that's just how they sold it. That's it. They sold it in one big, big piece. So we're going to take it out here with the most tiniest tongs we could ever find. The smallest ones ever invented, ever created. There they are. We're going to go ahead and drip it a little, let the drippings drip into that. And we're going to go ahead and cut this in half. Let's look at the inside. All right, there we go. A little. Come on, Dave. There we go. And look at that. Nice. And it's very good, very juicy. Uh, I'm not going to do like they do on TV where they squeeze the top. No. Uh, but now the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and cut. If you notice there on the lower right-hand side, there's the bowl with the juices and the other half of the turkey. That was for a separate meal. Now here, what we're going to do is slice up the turkey. And then after we slice it, nice, good size slice, we're going to cube the, the turkey, the turkey breast. We're going to cube it. Uh, so we'll get that done here and I'll speed things up here in just a second. I'll go ahead and take a sip of my coffee and then we'll get started on that. Alrighty, there we go. All right, so again, we just need to cube it because we don't need to shred it. Is We're not shredding this. We will cube it. I did give it a little tasty taste, that slap your mama seasoning. Oh, I'm telling you, get you some. You got to get you some of that slap your mama. All right, so now what am I doing? Well, I'm getting a plate here that I'm going to put in the dice pieces. And uh, again, I like using the paper plates because, again, they're easy to work with. Um, one use, you're done with them. You know, they hold everything. It's no big deal. It is paper, so it's recycl recyclable. So it's, you know, safe for the environment. And here we go. We're speeding things up. Yeah, see, these, look at the size of those cubes. And trust me, they're going to be in that pie and they're going to be filling. Now, it's as I'm doing this and I'm thinking, well, this, this is a lot of turkey. Maybe a half, a pound and a half of turkey was maybe too much. Well, I was right. Here's our pie crust. And it's a deep dish pie crust. Yeah, let it come up to temperature. Now, one of the things you might consider is either you know pre-cooking it you know pre-baking it that way it's a little solid at the bottom or you could um go ahead and uh possibly you know put um you know we're putting all these wet ingredients so things are going to get wet uh, one of the things you could do is get a toothpick or something and poke holes all across the bottom bake it that way it vents a little bit and it's done but i opted out of that i didn't do any of that i didn't pre-bake it so now we're going to mix our vegetables our cream of chicken and our turkey because there's no cream of turkey sauce all right so the first thing we're going to do is open up this cream of chicken and as i was saying so i'm putting all this together and you know, here we, here's that little handy dandy utensil there to open things up folks if you don't have one of these and especially if you're like me i have no fingernails um i mean i have fingernails it's just i never keep them long um it really comes in handy all right there goes our cream of chicken and now uh, another cream of chicken uh, no Yes, yes, did I? I think I did. No, I didn't. Not yet. Okay, so we now we put in the vegetables, and it's at this point now here, really. First, I thought the turkey might be, might be too, too much, but we get our shears here and uh, our utility shears, and we open up that bag, and the vegetables are still kind of frozen. You'll see that there. That's fine. You know, you need all that moisture, because that way it mixes in, makes a nice thin gravy in the pie pie. Now, I'm stirring this up, and I was like, man, that's a lot of vegetable. That's a lot of vegetable. Now we're going to throw in the turkey. See, there's the turkey. Now it goes in there. Not a lot of cream of chicken. Not a lot of cream of chicken. So it's at this point, again, I'm always at this point because that's where we are at this point in time. And I come to realize it's time to add another. So I add another can. And because again, I just, the turkey kind of set me up for failure. And then the whole bag of vegetables reinforce that. So at this point, it's uh, again, here we are at this point, it's going to we're going to have to make two pies. There's enough filling for two pies. So it worked out. It worked out because, well, you know, you'll see here in just a bit. So we mix this all in there, get it all nice and neatly mixed in. Don't forget the vegetables are still cold, so they're going to kind of clump together. They're still frozen. They'll clump together, but no worry. So we'll get that all mixed in here real quick like 
There we go. And that's it. Alrighty. So we'll clean this up here a little bit, get all that extra stuff out of the way. And there we go. Alrighty. So again, at this point, I did not, I did not use the onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper. I completely forgot, but that's okay because I was quite liberal with that slap your mama as it ran, as you know, we cooked it and made it, uh, it, um, it tasted fine. It tasted great. There was enough of everything. And I do believe maybe the sodium that was in the, the cream of chicken uh, helped out. Now, uh, one thing that it could have used is could have used some slap your mama at this point here. Um, as we're adding it, you know, mixing it up, we could have added that. But here I'm spooning it out, entering it into the deep dish pie crust, the Pillsbury deep dish pie crust. There we go. And we're going to fill that up. And it looks great. I mean, it's it. It was fantastic. This camera, for some reason, the lighting just does not do it justice, folks. It was looking good. It's like almost you could just get a fork and just dive right in. And technically you could because the turkey was already cooked. All right. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, while we're doing that, filling things in, uh, we're going to have to now talk about the topping. All right. So it's biscuits. You see them back there. All right. I, I think we, we did that. No, that's something else. Um, yeah, that is something else. That's for a different, that's for a different recipe you may have already seen. Alrighty. Now, there we go. So there it is. There's the pie. It's all nice and neatly filled up. We'll spread things out a little bit, flatten it out here and there where it needs to be. But for the most part, I'm happy with the way it looks at this point. You see everything that's still left over in the thanks Mrs. This Vet Cook. She went ahead and pulled that, that croissant. Uh, you see, there's still plenty of filling left. So there it is. All right. Now it's ready. Now, before we add the topping, we're going to go ahead and bake this just to get it up to temperature to thaw out the uh, vegetables. And there they are at 350. Get the inside already hot. So while that's cooking, you know, a couple of minutes there, about 15, 20 minutes. And now we're going to go ahead and open up the biscuits. Now, I chose these big jumbo bri biscuits. Uh, again, this is H-E-B brand. So uh, there they are coming out of that thing. I already did that little pop thing, which is pretty cool. And we're going to go ahead and do our picks for week 11 while we're doing this. Uh, we're going to slice up those um, those biscuits into quarters. So let's get started. Looking back on week 10, I went 5 and 9. Yikes. But I'm tied up for the season, 75 and 75, which is not good. Let's get started with our picks. Cincinnati Bengals take uh, travel to Baltimore to take on the Ravens, giving this one to the Ravens. All right. Uh, Sunday, the Cowboys travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers, giving this one to the Panthers. They're due for the win. Uh, the Steelers, the Steelers travel over to Cleveland to take on the Browns, giving this one to the Browns. And the next matchup, here we go, uh, uh, NFC North. Uh, Chicago Bears travel to Detroit to take on the Lions. Lions are at home. I'm giving them the W. All right, next one, Los Angeles Chargers. Come on, Los Angeles Chargers take on the Green Bay Packers. Packers are at home, however, giving this one to the Chargers. All right, the next game. And it's the early, still an early game. The Arizona Cardinals travel to Houston to take on the Texans, giving them, giving the Texans the W. All right, next one is Tennessee travels to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars, and I'm giving this one to the Jaguars. All right, next that next matchup is uh, the Vegas Raiders take on the Miami Dolphins in Miami, giving this one to Miami, of course. And the Giants travel down the road, down I-95, down to Washington to take on the Commanders, giving this one to the Commanders. And uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, travel to San Francisco off to the West Coast to take on the 49ers, giving this one to the 49ers. All right, this next one is going to be a big toss-up here, but I'm, I'm saying it. This is the barn burner. New York Jets uh, travel to Buffalo to take on the Bills, giving this one to the Jets. That's right. All right, the Seahawks travel down the West Coast, down to Los Angeles, take on the Rams, giving this one to the Seahawks. That's right, the Seabirds. All right, the Vikings travel over to Denver to hand them an L. They finally get an L, a much-deserved L. They should have had several L's by now, but, hey, giving this one to the Vikings. And Monday night, the Philadelphia Eagles travel to Kansas City, Arrowhead Stadium, to take on the Chiefs, giving this one, of course, to the Chiefs. And taking the week off is the Falcons, the Colts, the Patriots, and the Saints. Those are my picks for this week 11. All right, let's get back to the uh, pot pie. So there they are. All the pieces are there in the background. Come on. There we go. There they are. There's all the pieces cube quartered. So now what we're going to do, you yeah, see them? There they are. Now what we're going to do is put them on top of the pie. All right. So there's the pie. We took it out of the oven and now we're just going to lay them all out uh, one piece at a time. And then we'll just kind of, there we go. And it just fill it in. They don't have to touch. They don't have to actually fill in. Don't forget, they're going to bake. They're going to rise. 
they're going to rise. So we'll get that taken care of here in just a bit. And the bake time for this is going to be the time that is on the package, which has now been unraveled. All right. So it's the bake time. I think it's like 12 to 15 minutes. And I mean, I leave them in there long enough so they get a nice brown on, on the top. It doesn't have to be all brown. They don't have to be all hard and, and dried out. No. But uh, you definitely want to see some brown across the top. Again, this is a pot pie, or my take on the pot pie, a turkey pot pie. And let's finish, finish these up. Got about three more pieces to go. And there you go. And of course, if uh, in your situation you're doing this, you can always flatten them out a little bit, the dough. And there it is. Okay, there we go. I think we got everything. We'll, oh, yeah, a couple more. We'll fill in some spaces. We got a space up there. There we go. And where else? I think, yeah, right in the middle. We think we have one right there. Yep. There it is. And they can overlap a little bit. No big deal. Up oh, here we go. And one more piece here. All righty. So that looks like, I do believe, oh, the stray. Where does that one go? There we go. And again, we're good there. One more piece. There is room for another. All right. So again, we're going to bake this according to the directions of the biscuit, the biscuit container or barrel or whatever you call it. But there it is all nice and neatly covered. They don't have to touch. They will rise when we cook. All right, let me get my mitts on because this pie is still warm. And 15 minutes later, there it is. It's out. It's looking great. You see, that's what I'm talking about, that brown across the top. And yeah, you can tap on it. It's nice and neat. So let's get to cutting this. And uh, yeah, don't forget, it's you're okay. It is an aluminum foil pan from Pillsbury, the deep dish one. That one kind of misled me a little bit because I wasn't feeling it. But hey, um, you know, sometimes you get that react, that response feel to when you're cutting across something. I, I wasn't getting it this time, so it got me thinking maybe I didn't go in deep enough, but it looks like I did. Let's go ahead and take out this last little piece here. Look at that. And look at the inside. See, nothing drips. Oh, I guess we had the right amount of moisture. It's not runny. Uh, the crust was done. Let's move this out of the way. Let's give this a tasty taste. And uh, what else have we got? All right, so there it is. We see the crust. There's some of the crust. There's the biscuit and then some of the filling. And uh, don't forget it's hot, so you get a little, you know, cool it down a little bit. All right, there it is. Nice, good temperature, good flavor. Um, and because it's not the slow cooker, you know, it didn't permeate throughout the house all afternoon. So that's okay. All right, let's get some of that turkey, that big turkey piece. And again, delicious. Delicious, very flavorful. Let's get a little bit more here. And again, just to, you know, clear things up, make things right. And uh, there that is. And again, very delicious, very quick. Yes, I know the video took longer than normal, but it's very quick to make because you do do quick pieces, do really segmented times. So listen, um, I'm Dave Gira. You've got my picks. You've got, um, well, you've got my recipe here for turkey pot pie. And uh, hey, don't forget, I'm Dave Gira and this Vet Cooks.